Hi, welcome to Intruder Alert System using Image Change Detection. I am Muhammad Abdul Khadir and this is my project for image processing. So what is intrusion detection? Well, it's widely used in surveillance and security over public locations and high profile areas like military networks or secure government locations. Uh, a critical phase in intrusion detection is the analysis of images and videos that have been captured. So there are basically two requirements out of uh, intrusion detection system. The first requirement is a real-time analysis. You submit a request, uh, you send them a video for analysis. You wouldn't want to wait for a day or two to get a response. You want it probably in an hour or even less than an hour. So you have a need for speed. You need a real-time analysis of your surveillance recording. At the same time, um, you cannot compromise with the precision. A uh, fault alert in the case of intrusion detection is a really bad idea. Particularly in public locations, um, a fault alert may create more chaos rather than solving the existing chaos. Image change detection is a basic uh, abstraction way which will help you um, analyze images and video frames. What basically uh, what you do here is uh, you compare images and you perform a similarity check or a non-similarity check. You try to see how different two images are from each other, how similar they are or how non-dissimilar they are. It is a basic uh, phenomenon but it's very efficient. Um, using image change detection you can determine whether <coughs> what changes are significant and what changes are insignificant. For example, let's say um, you have an isolated area. Um, and uh, a human being passes by. That's a significant change. Whereas a stray cat going through the same lane is probably not a significant change. And you can, uh, you should uh, ignore such changes. You should de detect them, but you should ignore them. Okay. So my system uh, is basically designed to work for isolated locations, which means um, there is stationary background and. Uh, I differentiate the background from an intrusion in the foreground. And um, having the, my implementation is uh, modular, so you can modify one part of the uh, one one particular module without affecting the functionality of other modules, without uh, altering their operations. And this uh, this helps in future to uh, optimize. Say you have a basic uh, image change detection technique for now. Uh, you want to optimize it with a better technique. Then you just have to replace that module with a new module. You don't have to modify the entire system. This is a top level flow diagram for my project. I have a surveillance repository. Let's say I have a video or uh, a surveillance video and I use a sample video from YouTube. I have a surveillance video. That's it. And I extract uh, frames from the video and I store it in a surveillance repository. Uh, once I extract the images, I pre perform pre-processing. We will see what pre-processing is in a minute. But yeah, I basically uh, improve the quality of the images in one world. And after pre-processing is performed, I would like to detect if there has been any change in the set of images that I have. So what I do is I have a reference image and I have recent images. Um, a reference image is basically um, a stable background image and I use that particular image to see if um, the current image has any modifications compared to that image. Also I compare, uh, I compare with uh, recent images. I also want to see how frequent a change is occurring and based on few calculations and um, algorithms I determine whether an intrusion has occurred or not. If an intrusion has occurred I generate the alert and generate an alert and um, I notify the appropriate authorities or something. And um, <coughs> if intrusion has not taken place then I just disable the alert. <coughs> okay so my system has five modules uh, five basic modules and there's a top module called the main module which interacts with all these modules and uh, exchanges information or uh, variables among these modules. 
So the first module is uh, video frame extraction. Um, what it basically does is it scans a surveillance video and it extracts frames at a specific time. The operator or the user will have the option to decide uh, to give as an input what time the uh, surveillance video should be extracted, the frames should start extracting from and what time it should end from uh, end at and what should be the step up value. Um, these are optional arguments. If you just run the code, it will um, extract the frames for the entire video with a step up of one second. But you can you have the option to play with it. Once you have extracted the frames from the video, uh, you perform the pre-processing. Uh, as I said, pre-processing is, uh, in one word, it's improving the quality of an image. How do you do that? Well, you can. Um, there are two types of uh, pre-processing steps. You can say one is a geometric adjustments and one is radiometric adjustments. Geometric adjustments are basically required when you have uh, tilted images or non-linear images. The images that uh, I work on in this system are pretty much uh, f video frames so they are all uh, in the same linear scale. So what I perform here is uh, image enhancement using by adjusting the intensities. I brighten the images, I uh, overshadow a uh, few unnecessary or insignificant changes and also convert the images to grayscale so I don't have to deal with um, let's say more complications of radiation. Um, now that I have pre-processed uh, images with good quality, I perform change detection. Um, in my mod, in my system, I use the current frame and I compare it with a reference frame, which is basically the first frame or first frame that I have extracted. For simplicity purposes, I assume that the first frame that I have extracted is the reference frame, and uh, any frame after that is any different frame after that is uh, due to some kind of intrusion. I also uh, compare it with the previous frame and the next frame. And once I have uh, compared the values and I have got some kind of uh, an image or a change parameter, then I determine whether uh, nitrogen has occurred. For that, I have I uh, I see what is the variance of the change, whether it's significant or whether it's not, whether I can ignore it. And if it's a significant change, then I generate an alert. And uh, it's basically a sound which is proportional to the intrusion level. It's um, We'll look into more details. So the first module is the video frame extraction. <coughs> I uh, have a surveillance video as an input and optional arguments uh, like start time, end time, step up time and also the storage directory where you can store the image uh, files etc. Storage directory is kind of um, uh, critical so I provide the default uh, directory and uh, it's recommended that uh, a default directory is used because sometimes there would be issues of uh, write permissions, read permissions from directories uh, other than the working directory. And uh, for this project I use a sample video uh, which I have extracted from YouTube. It's a surveillance video of a home entry and burglary. Okay. Now that I have the extracted frames, I perform pre-processing. Uh, since all my frames are pretty much from the same video and same location, uh, there's not much pre-processing that I need to do on my uh, extracted frames. However, I make intensity adjustments, I brighten the images, I perform um, quality analysis of some sort. And I also convert them into grayscale images, so I avoid um, radiation issues. Okay, now I have, let's say I have enhanced frames. What do I do? I take the first frame as a reference frame. Um, since the user has a option to specify the start time, in essence the user has a, has a, a option to specify the reference frame. Your start time will determine your reference frame. Um, it is always the desired background based on which I determine all the future frames and I do the change detection. Okay, so I 
take a current frame and I compare it with the reference frame. And this uh, comparison and the uh, change range is significant as opposed to the previous next frame. Uh, next frame comparison is basically a future prediction. So it is not as critical as a previous frame or the reference frame, but for a simplicity po point of view, we take both previous frame and the next frame to be equally significant and uh, comparison with the reference frame to be more significant. Okay, now that I have uh, some data about the change, what I, I, what I do is um, I calculate the variance of the change, like how varied the change is. The more the variance, the more the significance. Um, that's basically a trivial logic. <coughs> And suppose you have higher frame rate. Uh, the frame rate I, I, right now basically it's uh, one second. You have a step up time of one second. You can assume that uh, a significant change can happen in a second. So you, you can just compare with the previous and the next values. However, if you uh, take frames in uh, on a scale of milliseconds or so nanoseconds, um, in such case, uh, previous and next images are pretty much the same. So there's not much change. Um, in order to uh, determine how frequent a change is occurring, or uh, you have to compare it with multiple adjacent frames, say the previous 10 frames, previous 100 frames. Uh, it's basically an extension to the current implementation. So once I uh, have uh, change values uh, and the variance, I verify it. I set some reference threshold or threshold values. I compare the change variance with the threshold and if it's more than that then I uh, increase the intrusion value which is nothing but uh, the intrusion level um, let's say I have a change with respect to a reference frame greater than some threshold then I determine it to be a significant change so I enter I append the intrusion value I increase the intrusion value by a factor of two um, now suppose uh, it is not more than the threshold of the reference, then I compare it with a uh, previous frame and the next frame threshold values. Then yeah, um, if I find any of them to be uh, more, then yeah, it's even that is a significant change. So I increment my intrusion value by one. As you can see, the intrusion value uh, for um, a reference threshold is more significant, so I incremented it to the left two. Whereas for a normal previous and next frame, I incremented the value with 1. This will help us determine how far uh, the current image is with respect to the reference frame. Is a, probably a more significant factor compared to the previous and next frames. And in most cases, the previous and next frames are like identical, mostly. mostly. So um, <coughs> you don't uh, get much of a uh, situation where you get more than the threshold. And if uh, none of those criteria match, then it's obviously an insignificant change. And for that, I reduce the intrusion value by one. Why do I reduce the value? Because I don't want uh, the alert system to continuously generating the, uh, keep generating the alert, even when the significant change turns out to be insignificant. We'll see it in the demo. Um, as I said, uh, the intrusion value increment for reference frame is 2 and for adjacent frame it's 1 and for insignificant changes I reduce to minimize the alert frequency okay let's see a demo now so basically this is my main module what I do um, is well, let's just go through the demo, so probably we'll get an idea through that. I will run the main module. The first thing that I'm asked for is to select the surveillance video. I have the surveillance video here. Let's open it. Okay. Now the command window requests for a start time. My uh, the sample video that I have taken has the first uh, first two minutes to be uh, a dark area, so I, I'll just ignore that location. Uh, I have even performed uh, 
change detection and intrusion on that part as well but it's uh, basically you know uh, I will just consider the living room for a more clear view so um, let's say um, it starts after 2 minutes 20 seconds which is 140 seconds next um, you enter the stop time and let's take the stop time till the end and um, you have a setup time uh, let's assume it's with default it gives an option whether or not you want to put an output directory I'll just use the default directory yeah so these are the sequence of steps that uh, my system enables first it starts by extracting frames from surveillance video it starts at uh, number 4197 which is at 140 And uh, since the step up time is one second, it will be skipping every, it will be capturing one frame for every 32 frames. That's the output folder, the default output folder. It is basically the working directory appended by uh, the tag of video frames. So it's, uh, it's extracting frames from the surveillance video which is a compute intensive task. So it, it takes a little bit of time and we have a significant amount of frames to extract. Okay, so it has extracted the frames and now it's saving the frames. As you can see the directory has already been created. It's saving the files there. Okay, so the frame extraction is successful and uh, we go to the pre-processing phase now. In pre-processing, I'm enhancing the frames. So it's a very quick process because I just uh, adjust the intensity of the frames. And next I convert the frames to grayscale and enhance them. So I am saving the grayscale frames and then I am enhancing the grayscale frames and I am saving the enhanced grayscale frames. As you can see the saving procedure is a little time consuming due to the number of frames that we have here. It's a very large number, 6000 odd. So yeah. Okay, now um, pre-processing has completed and I have started detecting the change between enhanced frames. I'm reading the enhanced frames and I'm evaluating the change, evaluating the change between current frame and reference frame, which is the first frame, uh, previous frame, and the next frame. For the first and last frames, I ignore uh, I ignore the previous frame for the first frame and the next frame for the last frame. I mix uh, according modifications in order not to run into an error while executing. But for all the images in between, it uh, considers both previous and the next frame. And since the setup time, step up time is one second, we can we can expect a change to occur in a one second time frame. As you can see, even the change detection phase is time taking a compute intensive and I perform the same operations well uh, basically I save the changed frames change frames are nothing but uh, subtract uh, differentiating or subtraction of two frames so um, I change frames I save them then I do the same operation on grayscale frames enhanced grayscale frames okay now I have images ready and here's the intuition as you can see
As the intruder enters the room, the uh, alert goes high. I'm sorry. And it keeps beeping as long as it detects the intrusion. You can observe that as the intruder comes closer to the camera, the, the frequency of intrusion level, the sound increases and now the intruder is away from the camera to a little extent. So the intrusion is low um, and accordingly the sound lowers down. Well, this is the reason why I uh, was subtracting the value 1 from uh, intrusion. A change in the background should not be as significant as a change in the foreground. Next, the intruder comes close to the camera, goes away, still the same. The intrusion now increases again. As you can observe, even though the intruder is stationary now, mostly stationary, the intrusion alarm goes high. Um, this is the probably reason where I don't consider adding a stationary image to the existing background image. Uh, the background image is stable and any intrusion, stationary or moving, is an intrusion. I just determine how significant it is and based on that I determine I generate the sound or a alarm, an alert if you may say. The longer the intruder stays in the vicinity of the camera or uh, in the closer to the camera the intrusion keeps on increasing the alert sound it, it increases The intruder observes the camera now and he wants to dislocate it or something. As he approaches the camera, the intrusion increases very high. It goes high. That's quite expected because the image is not totally distorted and way, way uh, different than the reference image. Okay. So, uh, once you generate the alert, the instruction the intrusion verification is complete and you have to respond quickly to be safe and the intrusion detection is successful let's go through the code once so this is my main module all it does is calls different uh, modules sub modules this is base modules so initially it calls the video frame extraction module and the video frame extraction module extracts all the required frames based on the specifications given and returns the values this um, this is a code for principal component analysis that I initially plan to implement I have implemented a code and I try to run it I get different eigenvalues and eigenvectors I try to analyze it but it was getting way too complicated for a very simple implementation so for time being I have ignored it but uh, the code is available, the calling function is available, you just have to uncomment and run it. Okay, once the extraction is completed I begin the pre-processing where I call the pre-processing thread. The pre-processing thread does this, it enhances the in frames, all it does is takes frames and it adjusts the intensity, it converts them to grayscale. and um, it adjusts the intensity of the grayscale images as well 
I think all these images in different directories just avoid confusion and uh, for a proper organization I'll show you the directory once you go through the, after we go through the code even the naming scheme is different for different um, scales and uh, you can have a same naming scheme with different directories but um, I just want to keep it uh, clear if anyone wants to use it in the future um, so once uh, pre-processing is finished the next step is the change detection I go to the change detection code this function performs um, the change detection it reads the reference image it reads the current frame and um, based on the value whether it, uh, in order to skip for the first va last values uh, they don't have both previous and next values so I uh, implement a condition to check whether it is the first frame or the last frame if it's uh, first frame then I ignore the previous value there's no previous image for the first frames and if it's not then I read the previous frame I perform the change de change uh, detection or subtraction basically I write it back to a new folder which I'll use later on for all future intrusion detection purposes and uh, everything else um, similar thing is done with the, for the last image it's done and I save the change frame and I ch change the detection between colors frames and everything and uh, say I, I perform the same operation for grayscale images as well once the change detection is finished now I go to the intrusion detection function or module intrusion detection module it um, takes in uh, it just reads the values from the changed values and uh, tries to clock out at the variance Collective variance is an uh, easy representation rather than calculating variance across the different dimensions. And um, I use the same conditions to read the previous and the next values, and I perform the variance of those previous and next variables or frames. And uh, well, this is the tricky part. I generate the intrusion based on this function. So if the reference variation is greater than 300, let's say, then I increment the intrusion value. Why 300? Well, um, it's just fine-tuned. You can, you can uh, optimize it based on your data requirements, and 300 and these 200 values seem to work fine for my implementation. So I have, I'm just going through it with that. Um, the reason I have set a lower uh, threshold for previous and next values is because there is a probability, higher probability of those images being same as the next, as the current image. So uh, the threshold, uh, setting a lower threshold makes more sense. And if there is no significant change, then this is the uh, intrusion value will be rec decremented by value of 1. The reason why you saw earlier to uh, reduce the alert sound. I read those values, I display them, uh, and um, I generate the alert signal. So, alert is basically a simple program. Um, it verifies whether the range is greater than zero or not. Sometimes it may not be, um, sometimes none of the images may be significant. So what you do, uh, you just keep on decrementing the value and you don't want to produce any sound when the value is negative. So I see whether the range is greater than 0 or not. If it is, then I perform these operations. What I do is I take the range and I, incre I increment its value just to fit into the audio uh, range for our sine wave. And if the frequency goes more than 4000, I'm limited to 4000. Uh, because um, frequency above 4000 creates a very disturbing noise which is highly unpleasant for ears and uh, <clears throat> the duration of the sound is one second and uh, well it just generates the sound and um, once it's done it returns to the main module where intrusion verification is finally completed and um, the respond quickly 
notification pops up and intrusion detection is successful so this is my implementation let's see the working directory ones this is a surveillance video that I uploaded um, here are some video info just for my reference and these are the frames that have been extracted um, the first folder are the original frames extracted from the surveillance video they are enhanced and stored in the color and of course enhanced folder next um, color images have been turned into grayscale and they have been enhanced and stored in the grayscale folder let's see uh, this one's pretty interesting so when you uh, compare a frame with the previous and next frames you see a very tricky pattern here's a frame and it has been compared with the next frame if you can see here it's underscore next um, here's a frame with the previous frame significant significant change right yeah the variance would pro probably be very high even if the reference is significant so yeah uh, and the next image not so significant with its net with the next image that follows with the previous same case with the reference well of course it will be more next previous reference next previous reference as you can see uh, reference obviously has a larger change uh, so it implies it gives more variation um, more variance value so um, a higher threshold needs to be set in order to determine whether it's a significant change or not same is done with the grayscale images So the total number of um, images that have been extracted and analyzed is 598 items. Um, that's a pretty huge data. Okay, let's get back to the presentation. Sorry about that. yeah now that we have seen the demo let's see what can we extend this project to well um, right now my implementation assumes a steady stationary background you cannot modify the background you cannot create a new background you can change the reference background but once a reference back image is given that's it um, this can be extended to support addition of new objects to the background. Let's say an, uh, in an isolated conference room, a new, a new item is put on the table. Well, for the first few uh, frames, sure, it's an intrusion. But um, as time passes, it kind of becomes part of the background. Mm, that can be implemented with a little update to the current implementation. <coughs> Also, um, upon addition of new image or something, um, my current implementation reduces the intensity of alerts, but it does not completely stop them. It still keeps on beeping to let people know that something fishy is going on. Well, uh, the system can be made smart enough to determine whether the particular change becomes insignificant over time or not. Um, also. Uh, for dynamic backgrounds with all changing uh, crowded place or something, you need advanced change algorithms. Simple differencing algorithm that is implemented in this program might not be sufficient. Might be sufficient? Mm, no, it, it might not. It won't be. Um, it's mostly suitable for stationary backgrounds. And a fine-tuned threshold value for intrusion detection. As I have shown, I selected a values of 300 and 200 respectively for reference image and next and previous images. Those values uh, have served my purpose well, but is it always the case? Not exactly. You need to have a fine tuning of the threshold values. You need to um, make sure that you don't lose any significant change or count any insignificant change as a significant change. How do you decide the border? 
something to think upon. Um, also, um, as you have seen during the demo, the video frame extraction phase and the pre-processing phase are uh, these modules are very compute intensive. They work upon like in in my case uh, about 600 frames. It's uh, too much of processing. We can exploit parallel computing techniques to see if this particular operation can be performed in a shorter time. Um, as you can see, uh, since it's performing operations on all images independently, or probably you know, in a sequential fashion here, but um, uh, those operations are independent, there is a huge option for exploiting parallel computing. So that could be another Im improvement on the current implementation. Alright, thank you for watching the video. Have a nice day.